Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bishop's RV in Utah, and I looked up and I had just enough time to record one last video before I gotta head back and pack and hit that plane. So uh, I am cutting it close, I'm gonna have to move pretty quick. This is a, uh, a little single axle dream bunkhouse by Chinook, and flat out, I'll just say this, there is nothing original about this floor plan. So what I wanna do is show you uh, more focusing on how Chinook executed this floor plan in the Dream series. And overall, I actually think it's one of the better executed versions of this floor plan I've seen. There are a couple things though that I really feel like, oh, it was so close to just really nailing this one. But frankly, like if what you're looking for, you just want something that's put together pretty well, but you're not looking for the fancy laminated high dollar package. You ain't ready to spend the big money. You got a couple little fireballs that are gonna run around and bang on stuff for a while. You need it to hold together until you're done to swap in that couples model. I could see this one getting the job done. So like I said, you've seen this floor plan just a thousand times, right? Um, they went eight foot wide with this, which is very similar to like what Keystone and its Crossroads and Dutchman subsidiaries will do in case you weren't aware. Crossroads and Dutchman are basically like child companies, uh, you know, to the parent Keystone, which is why they have a lot of the same marketing, a lot of the same things. Anyway, uh, so that is a Camp Queen bed. Uh, I know that that's not everyone's favorite thing, but with this being eight foot wide, what that means is that we're gaining that extra closet space to the right of it there. And uh, actually some folks came in to look at this camper earlier today, had a whole family full of redheaded little boys bouncing around in the thing. And I, I asked him, I go, how many shoes do you take camping with? He goes, oh man, we have so many. I said that nice area right there inside the door gives you a spot to keep your shoes, which is great because frankly, not a lot of little campers do that. Um, another thing they've done really well here, because it does, it has a fairly blunt nose, is they were able to include a lot more in, uh, overhead storage space and functional storage space. I mean, they have so much storage space in here, it puts the F-U-N, uh, N, F-U-N, in, in functional. F-U-N, in functional. Don't fire me. Um, so this is pocket screwed cabinetry. But they are, they're using these little miters on the doors. That's a little white thingamajigger uh, right there that's, that's kind of holding the cabinet door together. I have seen campers uh, over the years where those little miters can kind of wiggle loose and the fit and the finish on those cabinet doors can kind of become a little bit suspect. So I don't know if Dream has a problem with that. I don't have a huge amount of experience with the brand yet. I'm simply sharing some of the experience that I have from previous walks of life. And just being candid and open and transparent with you. Flipping around the other direction here. It is kind of an open upper bunk. But it does still have a little bit of a partition wall right there. And where that's kind of nice is I've seen some campers where that upper bunk is dead on the same level as that partition wall. So stuff is inclined to fall off the bunk and down here. So as a result, you're not really going to have that problem. No, whoa. Whoa, I believe that's still got DVD function. Holy cow, guys. Holy cow. 1990 called. They want their six-disc changer back. <laughs> Actually, DVD player can be a useful thing still in an RV. If you're, you know, not everybody always has good internet streaming connection or whatever when you're camping. But look at this. Look at the little points of execution here. So you could very rightly call this a more entry-level stick and tin camper. But giving us doors at least to the dinette end storage right there you just don't find a lot of that like they're they've got decent outlet placement in here a decent number of outlets uh also you know they've done a decent well, i'm using the word decent too much you get the idea they've done well i mean it's a basic camper but it has smart points of execution uh the uh table and the countertop are all sealed edge press membrane um let me get you back here. You kind of saw in the floor plan in a flash, both bunks have their own light and household and USB plugs. I wish there was a window right there because if you remember from our flyby footage, there is a window down there and it does open for airflow. So I don't know. I, I like having an airflow window next to a sleeping space. That's just me. Now I don't have my shoes off, so I don't want to climb on the bed. So I'm just going to engage the core muscles and lean way back here. Um, we were talking about power outlets. 
Uh, let's take a look at this kitchen. Share where they're at over here. And actually, I realize you can already see them because, you know, I don't know if I like or if I dislike the placement of the power outlets in this kitchen. You tell me. So the outlets are right over there beside the stove. But this is our usable counter space. I get that there's a big window right there, but like maybe put the outlet right here or something, right? I mean, is that just me? Right, Scoo? <laughs> I'm so tired, I'm sorry. That just really got me. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I got tired giggles. All right, all right. Power through it. Okay, okay. Good cabinet space down here. They did really well down here. And they need to, because they went with a full-size pantry, or no, full-size refrigerator, they don't have a pantry, but look at the drawerage going on over here. But look at this. I want to talk some construction points on this. Look at how thick all of that plywood is around there. Speaking of thick wood, guys... One of the things that you can't see by just looking at this RV is the construction of the floor. Um, a lot of campers have a 5 8 floor thickness. So, I mean, there's nothing unusual about that. There's nothing right home about that. But there'd be something unusual and something right home about it if it was thicker, right? So, a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor, or even just any 5 8 thick floor, pretty solid in a little camper like this. This camper has a 7 8 thick floor. It's almost a full inch thick. Um, you can feel it when you walk in here. Like, I'm not saying plywood floors have give, but like you walk in this and it feels almost like you're walking on concrete. It is solid. Uh, unlike Katrina and the waves, you are not walking on sunshine in here. It is not giving away under your feet whatsoever. Now, personal belief I have, if you want a good house, you start with a good foundation. And this has got one of the most robust foundations I think you're going to find in the towable market. And it's here in what we're going to call an entry-level stick and tin bunkhouse camper. It's pretty cool. Now, something else I really like up here. Like, you got lights for the bunks, right? But instead of you having to reach through and click all this stuff off, it's just lights out, kids. And are you noticing how that affects both the upper and lower bunks? Now, let's say one of your kids is a bookworm, which is super cool. Um, if the kid upstairs or downstairs wants to stay up reading or something like that and the uh, the other one doesn't you can turn either light on or off individually and then you just have the master switch control the bathroom is interesting um so first of all serious kudos good job chinook for including a separate sink in here so you don't wash your bathroom hands in the kitchen sink some people don't care some people really do but as a result the rest of the space got really tight now with that cutaway over here in that corner, it felt like when I was um, simulating doing my thing in here, it felt like I maybe had room uh, to, to do what I needed to do and take care of myself. But it was tight. It was tight for sure. It's it's You're going to be leaning when you do it. Now, it's six and a half foot tall, but they have a big skylight positioned right in front of the shower. So I could fit this thing pretty comfortably. And notice, too, a full shower surround paneling, not like a wall panel that you have to wipe down with your towel when you're done. Overall, I think given the size of the RV, I think they nailed that bathroom about as well as you could ever hope anyone to do so. Does anybody else have, like, do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there something you think they could have done better there? Because, I don't know, I think for, for what this camper is, I think they've done fairly well, you know? And as always, a look at the camper in road mode. Now, it's easy to overlook. Like you say, oh, it's eight foot wide. But even eight foot wide single axles rarely have double propane tanks. A lot of those are still single propane tanks. A power tongue jack, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Four corner stabilizer jacks instead of rears only. Uh, because especially in a bunkhouse with those little kids bouncing around in there. Uh, you get them all jacked up on marshmallows and Mountain Dew! Well, you know, they get a little wild from time to time. So the uh, the extra stability is nice. And that's where the stable steps kind of come in. By the way, you want to 
give them a little bit of the old razzle dazzle. You put some of those JT strong arm jack leg stabilizers on there and buddy, she's gonna be locked down like she's on a concrete pad. Not a big camper, so it doesn't have a big awning, but at least they did the best they could. And man, I wish I understood this trend of so many manufacturers omitting windows from the entry doors. Is there, let me ask you this, is there anybody who likes not having a window in the entry door? Just notice a little TV hook up there as I was uh, sliding back through this thing. Now on the back of these, they do something that I've never seen on a stick and tin camper ever before. Just to the right of that outside utility shower, not just a black flush, flush. <laughs> I'm whooped, but also a gray tank flush. That's just super, super rare. And I think that's really a good symptom, a positive symptom, if you will, a sign. Symptom kind of sounds sickly, <laughs> but it's a sign of the, uh, the, uh, the motorized influence, the history of Chinook as a motorized builder, uh, you know, in, in the RV industry. Now the underbelly of this is not enclosed or insulated or anything like that, but something I do think is very cool, and it's crazy that this little camper is using slam latches on this thing. And that right here, this is the storage under the bunk area. I like how they left that open. Um, one little critique is I would really, really like it if they did something to just kind of hide that water heater. And frankly, I don't like having all this plumbing open where cargo can shift and smash it. Now understand guys, if the only thing you dislike on this camper is that we can put some partitions up, we could build that for you. I just wish the factory would have done it, you know? And now jumping from under the bunks to under the master bed, Remember, since, uh, you know, there's that wardrobe closet uh, beside the bed, that pass-through under the bed doesn't go through the whole thing. Now, we still have the slam latch here, but it's weird to me that they have a, kind of an old-school catch. At least, though, it's a metal catch and not a plastic one. Uh, plastic catches over time, the, uh, you know, the sun will wear on them. They'll get a little bit brittle, and as I was backing up, I spotted a little battery disconnect up there behind the propane uh, hookups. That is a nice handy storage feature. So uh, again, pardon the brevity, I had time, I could, I could have done nothing or I could have squeezed this one in so I got what I could when I could here. And uh, I, I thank you folks for uh, tuning in here. I've really enjoyed visiting our dealership here in North Salt Lake. This is a beautiful facility. These are just really good salt of the earth, down to earth people. Um, I tell you what, I, I know I was welcomed with open arms, and I think you give them a chance, and I believe you would be too. As always, I'll link you, uh, link you a leaf in the video description. I, I, I need to wrap this up. I'm whooped. I've had a lot of fun. I've recorded my face off. I enjoy what I do. But it takes a toll, as you can tell. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and... I'm supposed to be dieting, but... I'm going to go get a pizza, everyone. <laughs>